Hey, Flimsy Lunch Tray here, and welcome to World of Worships on New Dawn, Standard Battle, being our Friday highlight, being the Marblehead Lima. This is a Tier 5 cruiser I've never featured here on the channel. I've featured the Omaha, which this ship is based off of, and then you also have something called the Marblehead, and then you have this ship, the Marblehead Lima, and I think there's a Russian version of this too, but I'm spacing the name of it, so... Basically, Wargaming, we, uh, we selling the same ship multiple times over and over. Um, it was actually funny. I was looking at, at more about this ship uh, when it came into the game. But it, the, it was, this is funny. So this reskinned version of Marblehead was used to be available exclusively as an invite code sold along with certain Asus motherboards and graphic cards. Later, she was offered for regular purchase. <laughs> It's like Wargaming being like, you can only get this ship a certain way in the game. And then later, it's for auction. <laughs> oh, never change, Wargaming, never change. Well, in today's battle, I'm uh, divved up with two of my clanmates, uh, Doom Beagle, and then a new hire, Perfect Ender. And we're showing him, at, we're helping, he's new to the game, so we're, we tend to take our newer players through tier 5, uh, tier 4 randoms in different classes. This time he's in the very fast New York. <laughs> and so we're just pointing some things out and trying to help round out his battleship played. And uh, I think he went and played Destroyers after this, I think it was. I can't remember. No, it was Cruiser as Konigsberg. Anyhow, today, Marblehead Lima. Um, so what is... Let me, let's just talk about this ship. Um, so she's a variant of the Tier 5 Tech Tree, the American cruiser, the Omaha. And put side by side, Marblehead has the most in common with Mar Omaha's B-Hull, with the gun and fire control and upgrades. As such, it has 8 guns. In addition, the A reigns the same um, as on Omaha's, Omaha's A-Hull, which means it's non-existent. However, it does come with a catapult fighter, which can be launched to intercept incoming bombers and make up for the small amount of AA if used wisely. The other uh, differences here is the torpedoes. Uh, you don't have the lower torpedo launchers of Omaha, and Marblehead's launchers use different torpedoes with completely different specifications. As a result, the playstyle when using the torpedoes is quite different. To begin with, the Salvo has fewer torpedoes, as the hull is left with two triple tube launchers instead of four. While they have an impressive range of 8.2 kilometers versus, I think, Omaha's 5.5, uh, making more use of flooding or weakening BBs. They cannot be relied upon to sink an enemy at range due to poor speed of only 49 knots, making each salvo easier to evade. Furthermore, the low damage is painful if attempting to kill a single target as it only flicks 6,233 damage max. However, at close range or against multiple targets, the torpedoes can have a fast reload time of 38 seconds compared to Murmansk's 69 seconds and almost 45. Murmansk, that's the other one. Uh, that's a copy of the ship here. So let me just briefly talk about, if you're a newer player, uh, I'm going to point out something here that's very important when you're playing the low tiers and tier 5s. As, as I explained to Perfect Ender towards the start of this match, typically when you're playing the mid-tier, low tier, uh, on standard battle, uh, your team just tends to go to the very far flanks. So you can see our team is pretty far up on the T3 line, and the rest of our team, besides me and Perfect Ender, uh, they're all down on the 8 line, because we have a whole destroyer wolf pack down there. And what tends to happen is your teams will split evenly in two and go to the far reaches of either end of the map. And at tier 5, you don't really have fast ships besides the destroyers. And so an enemy destroyer, like maybe let's say that Kamikaze, circling around the middle, will just come down and he'll cap your base. So for myself, because I don't think there needs to be more than four destroyers, <laughs> two destroyers, I decided to come back towards our cap, as Perfect Ender is going to continue up the flank and try to engage the October Revolution. As I point him out, well, I defend the cap um, and try to reinforce the northern flank a little bit. So that's basically the play style here. Now, other things in terms of the ship, the pros and cons. One of the things I like about the ship over the Omaha is that your guns have a slightly faster rate of fire than Omaha's. Um, your torpedoes have longer range in Omaha's. You have the catapult fighter, which supplements AA defenses, but the catapult fighter never stops the first strike. Good maneuverability, uh, adequate main battery firing range, can be very effective at setting fire to enemy ships. 
and can train six guns forward or aft when facing the enemy bow on or kiting away. Cons is like, <laughs> if you watch the Mighty Jingles, it has a massive citadel. It's very weak armor. Um, it's very easy to be dove struck uh, in the ship. So it's a little bit, uh, it's a tier five cruiser in the game. Most tier five cruisers in the game are very dangerous to play. So if you want the true cruiser experience, you play a tier five, right? Uh, large detection range. Torpedoes have low damage, have low speed, and are easy to avoid. Worst A defense in all of all tier 5 cruisers. I'm not sure if that's still accurate or not, but it's pretty bad. And you have no secondaries here on Marblehead Lima. So, in setting up here, you can see our gun range is 13.9 kilometers. As I pop open uh, the hydro for the minimap, because I want to see that. We have a 4 kilometer hydro. And we're just sitting here. We're keeping this island between us and Kamikaze. If he's still somewhere in the back, not sure where he might be. Um, and we have our hydro. So that's going to protect us in case he decides to run up on us. And then we can shoot these two destroyers that are pushing further forward here. Um, now, I, this build I run here, we'll do an upgrade commander build video uh, here on Marblehead Lima tomorrow. Um, is basically the same, same build I run on Halsey, because if you see the red shell tracers, this is Halsey as our commander here on Marblehead Lima. So he has a few perks with enhanced skills and also in terms of his talents. So we're going to continue focusing these destroyers as we're trying to help out our submarine player, as terrible as that is to utter that off at the tip of my tongue. As there's a cruiser, Furutaka, coming to back them up, and they have another cruiser even behind the Furutaka as we take out the Farragut, and then there's a battleship that was last seen up at A5, so I'm assuming he's probably going to be coming back down. And I'm not really sure where the Kamikaze is, if he's still back behind me, or if he's moved up around on my flank. And he has moved up around my flank trying to torpedo me, but we play with off throttle a lot. Uh, as a cruiser player, you're accelerating, you're deaccelerating, so just because of us naturally doing that, we avoid these torps, but we saw them on hydro anyhow. Now the Kamikaze uh, got too close. I think it's the sub that's lighting him up. But I think he did DCP a fire that I had put on him. But we're going to keep uh, shooting him here as we knocked out his engine. So when a cruiser or destroyer is like this and he pops up smoke and we just took out his engine, then we're gonna keep blind firing him because he's still sitting just somewhere in there and it is our fire that actually takes him out here because um, he wasn't able to put it out because he dcp'd too quickly now in the meantime as we dealt with the kamikaze you can see that i was angled uh, away from the furitaka and the hawkins um, meaning that we were in a much safer advantage here and not presenting a large profile uh, to the other ships but we had to accelerate here because there is torpedoes. <laughs> so I don't mean to try to shoot the torpedo. Um, and we're going to unfortunately take a torpedo hit. I think it's from the Furtaka, I think, uh, that fired those. So we're only down to 9,000 hit points. So uh, meaning that we need to be playing smart and wisely here. But we're going to keep focusing the Furtaka. I'm going to accelerate forward a little bit more here because I want to get to the lower part of the eastern part of this island, right part of the island in front of us. Pop a shot off on the Hawkins. And we're going to go dump Torps in case the Furitaka comes out forward. And our reload between Adrenaline Rush and the top grade gunner working right now is somewhere around just above five seconds, uh, if I remember correctly. Now, Renown takes out the Furitaka for us as Doom takes out the Ohotnik. Uh, so unfortunately, we don't get our third kill there. But there's more to come. So we're going to circle back. And one of the things that's very helpful in playing the Marblehead Lima, like you play the Omaha, Murmansk, um, yeah, so on and so forth. Uh, because you're base, you are a light cruiser, uh, playing around islands is extremely helpful. Now I'm trying to blind fire the submarine just to see if I can land anything and checking our range of only five kilometers with the depth charge uh, airstrike there. But I'm just trying, you know, might as well, right? The other cruisers, the other cruiser and battleship are beyond my main battery firing range. But I don't want to go chasing after them. Only have 9,000. It's possible for Arizona to easily dev strike and take us out. So what I'm going to decide to do here is I'm going to, I am going to move up further, but I'm going to uh, move to a position where this island um, is uh, covering me. As I can see on the mini map with one of the mods I have from the World of Warships mod station, Shows on the map whenever a submarine pings roughly where he is. 
So I expect the Arizona to keep moving south down the two line like he is. And the sub, I'm sure he's probably going to try to come towards our cap at some point. So I'm going to set up in a defensive position and just let the enemy team uh, come to me. There's no need for me to go chasing them and putting my uh, health pull at a disadvantage or maybe be caught off guard by the October Revolution, who's now slowing up the nine line up to the north. So we want to play mindfully here. Um, and so whether you're trying to use maybe a div mates, a clan mates, uh, smoke screen or islands, it tends to be pretty uh, helpful uh, to do such things uh, whenever you get the opportunities to, because otherwise you're very easily to get dove struck uh, and talking about beforehand. So now we're going to put our um, guns to use here and then setting some fires on the Arizona. Let's see if I can catch a reload time again here. X about 5.3, but we just activated top grade gunner now. Hawkins has used one of his heel in the heels in the meantime. So we're actually gonna back up and we're going to uh, re-engage him because <clears throat> we don't. He sees the pressure that our um, destroyer player is creating on their cap. And so he is responding to that threat to the cap, which is another reason why I wanted to actually move here to this island because I figured Hey, Arizona he might keep pushing, he might turn back because of the threat on the cap, or maybe even the Hawkins, uh, who snuck away with the lower health originally, and I can just sit up here, and our friendly destroyer can easily spot him for us, and we can take him out. Now, we just activated the main battery reload time, our confederate talent uh, via Halsey. Uh, so our, we have a faster reload time by negative 20% on our main battery guns, and also our torpedoes. So you can see now we have a 4.6 second reload time uh, on these guns. And I think the stock reload time is... What is the stock reload time on this? I have to pull it up. Now in the meantime, I decided to go ahead and pop Hydro because I'm, I've been waiting, just, I've been sitting on it, uh, waiting just in case the sub decides to get closer. And indeed he does. Uh, so these guns have a reload time of... 6.67 seconds with nothing built into it. Um, now with having our Hydra up here as we pick up the shoulder to shoulder achievement, I'm going to keep shooting the Arizona, but I'm going to switch off to our depth charge airstrike uh, whenever it reloads uh, here on the sub. Now if you're a submarine in this situation, you're caught up by my Hydro, you just need to turn away and disengage. Um, <laughs> this is the second time I've had a submarine player do this to me. Um, uh, the other one was I was tier 10 in Minotaur, and he came around the island just like this, trying to kill me, and I had Hydro up, and, I mean, he, it was just really odd and bizarre behavior. Um, because I'm not going to let you get closer to me, right? I'm going to keep dropping my depth charges on you, which roughly reload time of 16 seconds with Adrenaline Rush. I have all these forward-firing guns. You're lit on Hydro, I can keep dropping depth charges on you and picking up the general offensive, and... Yeah, that's all she wrote. <laughs> As Renown takes out the Arizona to end the game and getting 2,000 points. So that is the Marblehead Lima for you today. So General Offensive Confederates, shoulder to shoulder with 151 main battery hits, 82,000 damage with four destroyed. We didn't get our Kraken unleashed, sadly. I was really hoping to be able to pick that up this game, but that was not the case. With the three floods and four depth charge hits, on our little submarine friend charging us. And actually a pretty good base XP for a tier five game having 2,237 uh, base XP. Very good, our renown did really well <laughs> as well. Uh, so working in tandem there on the flank worked out really well for us. Uh, we took 19,000 damage. Our potential damage was only 221,000 damage. Uh, you can see our fires caused 24,000 damage. Our airstrike we did 8,000 with. In main battery high explosive we did 49,000 with. Now if you do get cruisers close enough, you can certainly switch in using your armor piercing even on some battleships. Uh, so do keep that in mind, just we were firing more at range and doing more with the destroyers. So we relied more on our um, high explosive than utilizing any of our armor piercing. As a cat walks by the window staring at me intently. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, tomorrow we will uh, I will future the Marblehead Lima and going over the upgrade commander build. Not too complicated, it's a pretty fun ship. Um, just a few different things going on versus the Omaha, uh, and I quite like it. Particularly just having that slightly faster reload time 
uh, I do uh, really enjoy here. As you saw, we got an even faster between Top Gear Gunner, Adrenaline Rush, in activating Halsey's Confederate Talent and reducing reload time by negative 20%. So, if you liked today's game, give it a thumbs up. If you did not, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. If you're subscribed, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. And we will catch you next time. Take care.